software analyst with Dracos, and we will be talking today about detecting and responding to ICS threats. We'll spend a couple minutes talking about Dragos, really why the company exists and our core competencies, and then take a look at our platform, which is our primary output from the company, uh, the tool we've created to address detecting and responding to threats in this landscape. So I believe everyone watching this is familiar with why we're here. Our infrastructure is at risk. And it's no longer uh, hypothetical situations. The threat scenarios have been legitimized and seen in the wild. Our industrial networks are actively being targeted. And solving that problem is not straightforward. Ultimately, the demand for people to understand what is required to protect and defend to these types of attacks is greater than the supply. There's a talent gap where uh, very experienced operators may not understand the forensic aspect of response and accomplished uh, so-called forensicators may not understand the types of devices or really the structure of the networks. Additionally, as an industry, we haven't done a very good job of consistent monitoring of that layer 3.5 and below, and below in the Purdue model. And that's created a lack of visibility. So we're short on intelligence, on threat intelligence, and really understanding the adversaries that are targeting the networks. And finally, if we did recognize the need for visibility, there hasn't yet been a really solid tool that is not only capable of capturing the traffic, but understanding the numerous protocols and applying the threat intelligence that we gain from seeing attacks. So we have Dragos. <clears throat> and at Dragos, we, we really, pride ourselves as being a comprehensive ICS cybersecurity solution. Our foundation is on trusted experience. As a good example, one of our first uh, employee policies is that everyone gets to wear a hard hat. Regardless of your day job or where you work within the company, we encourage you to get out into the community. If you're not already an active participant, uh, to join it, understand the unique challenges and what's required to respond and detect. We host a training at our headquarters in Maryland, and every employee goes through that, so they have a chance to do ladder logic programming and receive hands-on with a PLC device. Now, within Dragos, there are three core competencies that are broken up into teams. The first is our threat intelligence team. This is made up of individuals that are formally trained and experienced with the process of intelligence gathering and analysis. They understand the nuances that separate data and information from timely and actionable intelligence. So through uh, reverse engineering, open source intelligence, uh, partnerships, commercial data sources, we bring in multiple uh, data feeds and then analyze that to identify what's of value to the asset owners. And that information is pushed out through Worldview, which is where our intelligence reports are published. And those reports include adversary and technical reports, uh, vulnerability notices, executive th threat summaries, and so on. And again, these are written by intelligence analysts. So inflation of consequence for vulnerability reports are left out. Doomsday scenarios or messaging that is common in the media is, is left out of these. It's really focused on what data operators and asset owners can use. Next, we have the Threat Operations Center. This is the team I work on. We're the uh, customer facing, really the service side of Dragos. So we do incident response via retainers, rapid response, uh, tabletops and workshops, proactive threat hunting, penetration testing. And again, we uh, provide a lot of the content and deliver that at our training uh, at our headquarters in Maryland. And these two groups work very closely. Uh, we complement each other. As a good example, when we're doing a tabletop scenario, we don't create a hypothetical situation with a, uh, again, catastrophic event. Rather, we work with the threat intelligence team to identify a legitimate threat based on a real threat vector that is specific to that client's uh, vertical. And finally, we have our platform, which we'll talk about uh, in depth throughout the rest of the presentation. This is a server sensor model. So we ingest data via uh, a tap or a span port, 
We can receive host logs from NXLog or another agent, as well as get data from our strategic partners. So we've got these two teams, the intelligence team and the threat operations center. Uh, so we've got a, a good blend of very technical, very trained individuals on the Intel side, uh, capable of reverse engineering and uh, identifying custom firmwares, and threat operations, which is really staffed with experience, experienced practitioners. A lot of the people on uh, the talk, as we call it, are previous asset owners themselves, and they're used to defending these networks directly. So that's great for Dragos, but how do we propagate that knowledge out to our customers? How do we give and share that information with the industry? We do that through codifying it into our platform. So our platform is passive monitoring. We can use it to identify, visualize assets, look at the traffic between these assets and evaluate that traffic for expected behaviors. But the real value added is applying the knowledge from threat intel and from threat operations to detect threats and then facilitate response through playbooks and experience gained from active engagements. So ultimately, our monitoring, log collection, uh, industrial security product integrations, they're all in place to enable threat hunting and facilitate response. So when I think about protecting any network, ICS specifically, I kind of think of three core questions. The first is what is on my network? What assets exist? What are those assets talking to? What's uh, inside of those uh, communications? Really, how is data flowing across my network? So we gather that again from host logs, from uh, strategic partnerships, network traffic, and we can analyze that to see if devices are acting the way they should. That's, that's wonderful from a environment behavioral standpoint. I can say something looks kind of weird. However, the most common question we get, and most of the clients that engage us are asking the second more important question, is my network under attack? Now you have to have some base understanding of your network to really identify uh, potential impacts and the ramifications of a threat. So when we talk about uh, network being under attack, we can discuss threat modeling, threat landscape, certainly looking for known malware, uh, or what I call low-level indicators like file hashes and uh, known bad IPs. But the target is to get to tradecraft identification, monitoring, looking for, and then alerting on adversary behaviors that are not contingent on those low-level indicators. Ideally, we can associate that with context about our network, and that's what we're starting to build up. Once I find something that may be malicious, now I'm interested in facilitating response. So we generate playbooks, and those really address those crucial first 15 minutes of the response process. What is my volatile information? Where would I find the data? What questions should I ask? And what data is needed to answer those questions? We can also code in some best practices. The ultimate goal of a playbook is to give confidence to the analyst, give confidence to the organization. They're handling the uh, incident and triaging that alert appropriately, and they're competent to respond. So a quick note on deployment. <clears throat> Uh, a very common question is how many sensors do I need for my network? Where do I put them? And the easy answer is it's very dependent on the network. Uh, no topology is the same across multiple different networks. And so it's unique. And we work directly with our clients to make sure that we have the desired visibility. Uh, network address translation, transparent proxies or non-transparent proxies all need to be addressed but our target goal again is that lower level. We wanna get down in the Purdue model and have consistent monitoring, not just at the uh, ingress egress point with the IT network at that DMZ layer, but the lateral and internal traffic down below as well. So quick look at our dashboard. Uh, when someone logs into the Dragos platform, this may be where they begin. Uh, we have a couple tabs, hopefully you can see my mouse cruising around here, couple tabs on the top left here that uh, say detection, dashboard, cases, and playbooks. And we'll take a look at those uh, briefly. On the right, we can see another pane running vertically here with some data points. And we'll address that as well. A quick summary information you would expect from a dashboard, uh, all customizable. 
we have some asset information, we have the health of our monitoring system. Uh, in the middle of the page, we've got some alert uh, details, and then down below some protocol summary data. So, addressing the first question, what is on my network? That initial asset discovery, asset inventory task. So looking at this pane is our asset explorer. And if you'll notice, my vertical pane is on the left here. And I mentioned that because we'll, we'll come back to this uh, momentarily. But here I've got a listing of all of my assets. And I've expanded a specific, uh, in this case, an RTU, a Siemens device. And so I get some summary information about it uh, based on the Mac, based on the network behaviors, based on any potential uh, data we can get from an aggregation point partnership with the vendor. We categorize what the device is. We have uh, NIC or network interface card uh, information, summary of protocols, and then down below any potential alerts or detections that may be associated with that device. So this is great. On the upper right, I can export all of my assets and create a giant asset inventory. So that's wonderful if I'm looking for a spreadsheet, but we go a step further and visualize that by creating zones. And zones are fully customizable. Uh, assigning assets to a zone can be done based on, uh, again, NIC information or any other uh, qualities about it. But what I can do is create an interactive map for my network. I've done incident response for a number of years, and normally this is when the light bulb goes off, when new people see the, pro, the, the platform, and it was for me as well because in my experience, I go into a lot of networks and ask for a network diagram. It's one of the first requests by incident responders, and I've yet to receive one that is timely and up to date. Because we're not getting a feed from an IPAM or anything else, we're doing passive monitoring, this is up to date to the last time I reloaded the page. And I can create baselines on this data, I can replay, change my timeline, but this really maps out where my assets are and where the communications are taking place. Uh, quickly, we can see that we have an external zone, we have uh, two, it looks like, low level compressor stations and uh, some aggregation points. Now, on the right, a uh, little bit small here, but you can see a protocols pane, so I can filter on protocols. If you're looking for, uh, from a threat hunting scenario, say remote access, I can filter it on RDP, SSH, uh, VNC, any other remote access protocols and see which zones are talking to each other. If I click on a specific asset, again, I get that quick snapshot summary data. I get a breakdown of what protocols were seen in the timeline that I'm evaluating, NIC information, and I can add custom notes to that. So as an example, we see down here, there are two devices that are unzoned. If I click on that, it filters my map down, and this is the interactive capacity. So now I see specific communications. It no longer is between zones, but I see asset to asset communication. And again, I get that summary data I can click on one of those and see a breakdown of protocols. And for this scenario, uh, I have two unzoned assets that are talking directly to external as well as internal devices. Normally from a threat hunting scenario, uh, this wouldn't be straightforward. The time deviation between external and internal communications may be several minutes. And in a log uh, ingest scenario with high bandwidth, uh, that data can be very hard to correlate. So the visualization and the interactive uh, capacity of the map is very useful. But we want to get to the threat scenario. Again, our, our focus as a company is on identifying threats and facilitating response. So we'll jump back over to the left pane. Uh, notice my, my vertical bar is on the right here and I'm looking at the same tabs as I was previously, but now we are on detections. And in this pane, we see uh, what at Dragos we call the four types of threat detection. Uh, Robin Sergio will talk about this later, and uh, Sergio has participated in a white paper that's been released that goes into this more in depth. But we see behavioral classification on the left, so configuration changes. If I see a new source IP detected or uh, some new device on the network, I'm alerted to that. 
Up above, we have modeling information. A good example where we're pulling again from that lower level type device. We see uh, temperature alerts or pressure readings. This is great. And some of these may be actionable if I have context about the network, if I know that one device shouldn't be showing a high pressure. However, this information is constantly coming in. What I want to do is focus on the threats. So on the right, lower side, we have indicators. Again, these are kind of those low level indicators, uh, a known malicious IP or a uh, bad domain file hash. And we can see some detections over here. Uh, when appropriate, we will associate those with the activity groups that we're tracking from our threat intel team. The ultimate goal is the upper right pane, and these are the threat behaviors. These are aggregations of potentially other minor uh, low-level indicators that aggregate up to show a type of tradecraft or adversary behavior. If we click on one of these as an example, we'll choose the PSExec enabled recon and pivot detected. I get this uh, pane that pops up that provides additional context. Below, I can see three more specific indicators that our platform has aggregated together for me. It's provided that context. It also provides me some playbooks. And we'll take a look at these. Uh, so this is really that codification of the threat intelligence team that is tracking adversary groups, that is uh, reverse engineering the malware and the threat operations center work from being out in the field coming together. We have the adversary tradecraft detection, not an IP, not a domain, but a workflow, a tradecraft. And we have the tox guidance on how to respond. What should I investigate for that? So we can uh, create a case based on that. Our platform has a case management solution. And in this pane, we'll see a couple more tabs here. We have a journal, which creates like an auditing log. Uh, so I can see what, uh, what has changed and track that. We have notifications, which I can tie in. Uh, in this case, we pulled in our Dymaloy alert. And now we see our vertical bar is in the middle of the screen. Uh, down here, we can click on this uh, box and move it right and left. And the big advantage of that is I can use the threat detection. I can leverage the playbook guidance in the platform while looking at the raw data. So merging these two together streamlines a process of triage and general investigation. Uh, under the evidence tab, I also have the ability to upload uh, other either code snippets or if I have a threat report that I want to associate with the case. And so the case management solution is really meant to uh, provide all of the resources needed from an initial alert through the investigation to close out. Now on the right, I can see other types of notifications. We didn't see all of these notifications when we were looking at the detection pane. That's partially because uh, similar to changes in the environment, all of them may not justify a response, but aggregating them together into that tradecraft and that idea of a, a threat behavior rather than a specific item is really that application of our intelligence team. So finally, how do I respond? I found something, it looks bad, it was easily identifiable from the map in this case, or I could look at the detections pane. It seemed severe enough, I created a case, now how do I investigate it? Well, similar to tying in the notifications, we can tie in playbooks. And on the detection pane before, we saw investigate file payload playbook. So in this case, I see uh, almost like a checklist on the left side, and this is wonderful for not just junior analysts, but any stressful situation. It is a condensed uh, methodical action item list. And I can check these, I can make notes that one was not completed or is in process. And on the right, you'll see a small snippet, uh, kind of guidance with links to investigate the data. So I provide questions, what should be asked? I provide data. What data do I need to answer those questions? And then some links to view it raw in the platform. Now, a couple notes on playbooks. Uh, when the situation is high stress, which incident, incident response commonly is, 
uh, you don't want to spend a lot of time reading. You don't need to understand how to uh, reverse engineer a certain file type. You don't want to take the time to learn uh, some of the nuances of the forensic process. And so we keep this data uh, very targeted, very specific to that step within the playbook. And uh, down below here, we have links to what we call query focused data sets. And we'll talk about those momentarily associated with the investigate file payload playbook. We have a step investigate source host user agent, and I can click on these that will pivot me over to the QFD details. So these are the query focused data set. This is a query that is pulling up in this case, the HTTP header field. So I can answer the question that this playbook is asking me. It will help me triage the event. And you can see on the left here, I've checked some boxes. I marked some as X. Maybe uh, I wasn't sure on that one or I need it to be peer reviewed. And uh, on the right, I can see the actual user agent strings and the raw data that's housed in our platform from the collection that will help me answer these questions. Uh, so we've gone from an initial alert, some detection, to creating a case, tracking that case in our journal, having an audit log so other junior analysts can maybe go back and do a lessons learned or learn from the experience themselves, uh, playbooks that facilitate the process, and the raw data. Having this pane together uh, within the platform is, is very, very beneficial. So we can also apply this to hunting, being proactive. And the playbooks, they originally were intended for incident response, and that's wonderful. But from a proactive hunting capability, they really fit the bill as well. If you have uh, junior analysts that aren't as familiar with, uh, say, uh, one example here, command and control via DNS, they can come into the, plat into the platform, click on this playbook, and then see specific steps on how to investigate that type of traffic. That's wonderful from an education standpoint, but taking it one step further and pivoting into the raw data on the network that they can tie with the playbook, it really brings it full circle. So proactive hunting, absolutely, but also from an education standpoint to uh, not just see the material, the education material, but apply the uh, the data and the network communications in their environment to that scenario. Uh, and so many words, so quickly, uh, half an hour webinars go by very quickly. We've got about five minutes for questions. And I think we've got a question pane. If you type them in, I should be able to see them. Um, let me pull that up here. Otherwise, uh, thank everyone for their time. I'll scan through our questions here quickly. Okay, uh, so one question, is the platform entirely passive or are there agents for any vendor server? Uh, so the first part of that, the platform is entirely passive. We receive a span or a tap so we cannot push anything back to the network. Uh, a lot of uh, network owners previously haven't been open to the idea of a third party plugging in additional software. And we certainly understand that. And that goes back to our uh, trusted experience real framework. And so it's important that we remain passive. It's the, uh, the approach that we believe is best for the community and certainly what we've implemented. Uh, are there agents for any vendor server or vendor type? Uh, so, we can receive information via syslog. Uh, I mentioned nxlog. If there are others out there, we can uh, ingest those from like a Windows device. Uh, when we talk about vendor devices, we have uh, some partnerships out there to collect data from their own aggregation points. Uh, for instance, if they have uh, an accelerator uh, that's aggregating RTAC information, we can pull that in, or historian data, we can pull that in. And those uh, partnerships are very valuable because we can work with the vendors to say what data is of value and then tie that into the adversary uh, behavior as well. Uh, do we collect logs sent from the host log collector? 
Uh, so when we talk about a host log collector, if you're uh, looking for uh, like a SIM type product, uh, we don't have a direct API to a SIM uh, for duplication of data. Uh, but from a host agent that's deployed, you can, uh, depending on your infrastructure, point it to two, two different places. Um, next question, do we provide a list of our partners? Uh, our website has all of that information. Um, and if, uh, if there are any specifics or you're wondering about something specific, then please reach out to us. Um, Dragos.com, uh, I hate to, to direct people to a website, uh, but that is the most up-to-date uh, place to, to identify that information. Uh, let me see, one more question here. All right, uh, I think uh, based on the time, there are some other uh, really good questions coming in. Um, Ah, okay. Uh, one more question here, the product pricing. Again, uh, to our website, um, they, they let me touch uh, computer equipment, but don't let me talk about money um, uh, as, as a uh, play there. Any specific questions on pricing or what you would need scoping for your specific environment, uh, reaching out to Dragos and getting someone who cannot just speak to generals but talk to what you need to address your specific concerns and get the visibility that you desire is the best approach. Uh, so thank you very much for everyone uh, who joined today. And if you have additional questions, I will copy out the, those that I didn't answer and we will uh, follow up directly. Or again, you can go out to our website or uh, send us an email. Thank you everyone for joining.